Let's continue our deconstruction, teardown, whatever you want to call it, of the Tascam Porter 1 mini studio uh, by focusing on the upper part. I already removed the cassette player in an earlier section of this video series. Before I turn this over and take off the various knob caps, um, notice that there is this plastic shielding. Um, this is to prevent any of these contacts from shorting out against the record and playback board on the other half of the case when the unit is screwed shut. So keep that safe. So I'm using a plastic tool to remove all of these knobs without doing any damage to the case below. Switches like this are going to join from the back so we don't need to remove them. I've had a few of these and there's a couple of variations in the way these are built. Uh, the first one to remark upon is the way that these knobs are built. On the one that I've been deconstructing here, these knobs consist of a coloured plastic core and then there's a rubber cap that goes over the top and uh, so that coloured marker that you see is actually a bit of protruding coloured plastic. The other variation is that every single one of the knobs is a clear plastic base and then there's a rubber cap that goes over the top and uh, the coloured part is a sort of printed overlay onto the rubber and uh, you know these don't last as well this is probably going to be out of focus because I'm in manual focus mode but I hope you can see there that this is like a little bit worn so it's a bit scabbier looking and the colours aren't as vibrant anyway I don't know which variation came first, probably this is later as a cost saving measure. I'm not sure though. Anyway, moving on, I'm not exactly sure whether these brass nuts that you can see in some of the holes are in the same places that they were when this unit was originally opened. But once you remove those knobs you're going to find a few of these. If you don't have a socket set then you can get in here with a pair of needle nose pliers and unscrew them that way. That's quite awkward though. If you've got a socket set, that's by far the quicker way to do it. If you're wondering, that was a 12mm socket that I used to remove those brass fixings. In addition to those brass fixings, there are screws holding these two PCBs to the plastic mounting posts. Looking at the cube board first, we have one here. That's the only screw on that board. But you can see that this little daughter board with the power switch on it is uh, connected by soldered in wires so we need to remove two screws one either side of that switch. Notice that the plastic cap for the switch just came off as I was lifting that out. Unless I say otherwise uh, these are going to be a similar type of screw to the ones that I removed from the record playback board in the other half of the case. This one's a little bit longer than those so maybe a centimeter and a half. If you find yourself with uh, a mixture of lengths of screws after deconstructing one of these. Be sensible about where you put them back. Some units, if you use too long of a screw, it'll push through the plastic and you'll get little um, dings poking through uh, the smooth side of the plastic. The mounting post for this switch is quite deep. It's a couple of centimetres long, so it's not going to hurt to put a longer screw in, whereas uh, the mounting post for the PCB on the other half of the case were very short, so obviously you want to put a shorter screw back in there. Before I move on and unscrew this mixer, uh, this brings me to the other variation that I've seen in the construction of these. Here you can see that the cable is coming from these analogue VU meters and running into this mixer. There's little connectors so that you can have the meters and the mixer completely separate from each other when you deconstruct it. I seem to have mislaid the example that I had of the other variation of this, but just be aware that on your unit it might be like that. Um, like the variation of the two kinds of mixer knobs, I don't know which came first. Anyway, let's start from the bottom left here. Notice that there is a cable tidy in this corner. That's just to, I guess, stop this coming out here and prevent the case from shutting on reconstruction. So I've written in Sharpie C slash T for cable tie to remind myself that the cable tie goes there when I put it back together. And we've got another three screws here. And then another cable tidy just below this header. 
with that removed, we can more clearly see that of one, two, three, four, five headers going into this cue board, four of them emerged from this corner of the mixer. Now we've got four of them with four pins. Double check on your unit in case I've made a mistake reconstructing this. It looks like the multicolored one is over here on the right. And then the length of these two very similar looking cables give you a clue about which goes where. They may even contain identical signals, but the brown and gray ones are going into those two headers there. And this little two pin one is going into a little header that's passing through a hole in the PCB there. Then this remaining header it's a little bit stiff. I'll pull them out with pliers. It's coming over here, running to these meters on the mixer board. So that leaves us with just this brown, red, and orange ribbon cable with a red connector that goes over to the rightmost of these two voltage regulators, which are attached to this metal plate at the back of the meters. I mean, that's as a heat sink. We want to remove the cables rather than unscrew the voltage regulators because the voltage regulators will be held against that metal plate uh, with some sort of heat compound. You know, this sort of thing you'd uh, put on the heat sink of a CPU in a computer if you're gonna replace the CPU. So I don't really want to disturb that. So I would remove this, but just be aware that the brown cable should be on the left most of these three pins. If you're thinking of this going from left to right, brown goes there. I say that because it's possible to turn it that way up and uh, you know, you, your system won't power on properly that way probably if you flip that cable 380 degrees. At that point, this uh, Q-amp PCB is completely separate. You see, we can take these off to get into the only switches and pots for cleaning. Now on this variation where there are these connectors, I could uh, detach these now. Bear in mind, if you don't have connectors in the middle of these wires, then you're gonna have to detach the meters as well before you can get the mixer out. In my case, that is the mixer completely separate now. You can see some of these uh, caps for switches have already come off as I was lifting that out but they can be removed to get into the switches better for cleaning. Check the cleaning playlist on my channel homepage if you're not sure about that. Last of all, this plate's holding in these VU meters. Now I'm not gonna detach these two screws, they're just holding these voltage regulators onto the plate, but one, two, three, one on either end and one in the dead center, I'll need to remove those. And that plate will lift out. Allowing us to access the meters. The two halves of these are held on with tape. Usually you can cut through or pick off the tape. Uh, use a soldering iron to detach these fuse type bulbs. That is if you can find replacements. I mean, I'm, I'm dependent on using old machines which have still got some working bulbs to replace these. They're called fuse type bulbs, festoon type bulbs. You'd need to do your own research really to try and track them down. I haven't found a, a new old stock supplier or somebody who's currently making these. And we've got a door mechanism, two metal clips. On this side you can see that there's a little horseshoe spring. That's what, well it's, you can hear that came off there when I lifted it. It would be what prevents that from falling shut like that. Well, that gives me an opportunity to refit it for you anyway. Looking at it from the back, this is the leftmost fitting and this is the rightmost fitting. The way this works, and I'm not going to do it on screen because it's a real fiddle, but basically the lower of these pin for this right hand side goes through that hole and then you need to find a way to also get this protruding pin on this side of the door to go through one side of the horseshoe spring and um, the other end goes through that side there. I mean even demonstrating it out of the case it's... <sighs> there we go. You see when that turns, that kind of compresses this little horseshoe spring. It's a faff to book back in. Usually I put that side in. And you can see why that came out actually. Then some of these mounting posts are split. So I might need to do something with them. Maybe put some JV weld in them and round them. But yeah, I would advise you to attach this side first. Then put the door in. And then put this in loosely. And you're going to have to find some sort of door half open point 
where you can uh, slot the horseshoe spring onto the appropriate posts and once you've kind of got it right then tighten the screws on both sides and you should be okay but um, it does involve a certain amount of frustration and swearing unfortunately there's quite a lot in this series of videos that I'm glossing over because I have more detailed videos about things like cleaning, calibration and they're not demonstrated on this unit but it's close enough that um, I can refer you to those videos so if you're not sure how to clean the case I've got videos about that if you're not sure how to lubricate the mechanism I've got videos about that demonstrating on X15 which has got more or less the same transport if you're not sure how to calibrate it I've got calibration videos on several models the service manual for this is up on my site unfortunately the trim pots aren't very well labeled on this you know in some printed circuit boards it'll say beside it what pot does what this one it doesn't I would have to refer to the service manual but Essentially, these little trim pots are what you're going to be adjusting. Yeah, so I mean, I won't go into a lot of detail here just to say if you're in a position where you're making a recording and you, you know, you think you've recorded some instrument at like about zero decibels and then when you play it back, it's way quieter or a lot louder and distorting, uh, then there's probably some sort of trim pot to do with the record and playback amplifier that needs to be calibrated. And I would certainly attempt calibration before I assumed that you had bad capacitors or bad op amps in here. So I've got plenty of videos about that. Um, if there's anything else that you think's missing, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll either direct you to a video that will help you or, you know, if I, you've really uncovered a hole in my presentation, then I will make a follow-up video to get you covered. Anyway, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.